Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I want to show you how to create macros in Affinity Photo and of course my new macro pack for Affinity Photo is out. Here is a little teaser. Boom! And we're back in Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So before we get started with the tutorial, I want to really quickly show you what I created for you in the macro pack. The pro version has 15 different macros you can apply to your pictures. I'm not going to show you all of them because that's too much, but just some of them and how they work. So in your library tab, you will find the macros after you install them. And I try to create really nice and tasty looks for you. For example, cyanetic like this one is something you can use it for your social media, for your business, for your customers. There's a lot of different uses to apply this and have really nice pictures with just one click. But the best thing is because it is a macro, you get all the layers in there. As you can see here, this created two layers in this case. So it's completely non-destructive and you can go in here, see what I did exactly and make your own changes so you can create your own artistic look for that. So let's make another one. So let's delete these two here. This one is just clean and simple. You click on that and this will clean up the picture. And with some of them like here, I included some levers you can uh, use before you apply the macro. So for example, in this case, we want to reduce the brightness a bit and we want to have the sharpness a bit higher. And that's basically it. And there we go. So we have just gone from an unedited picture just out of the camera right into a clean and simple look that you can just show and post and it's like ready to go if you know what I mean. So that's pretty cool. Let's look at some other stuff. Let's go over to the second picture. This is a sunset. For this I have created something that is called Sunset Sky Magic. So we click on that. It's a bit too intense first because sunsets are different. So we have these adjustments here. In this case, we want to make it a little bit brighter. Not that much, just a little bit like uh, this looks good. Maybe have less saturation and then let's keep the vibrance up. And you see like this in seconds, we have created a pretty cool look from this picture to this picture. So this is how easy it is. This is how the macros work. And as you see, all of them are layers that you can adjust later on and you can also learn from them because you can look in here and see what exactly I did as the settings, what kind of adjustments I used. For example, for this one, I used vibrance, selective color, brightness and contrast, lens filter adjustment, white balance and levels adjustments. There's a lot of stuff going on. Okay, so let's get started with the tutorial on how to create macros and I wish I could tell you it's easy, it's fun, it just flies off the mouse, off the hand, like creativity pouring into Affinity for everything getting recorded. But I would be lying because creating macros in Affinity is slow, painful and extremely complicated. But I still want to show you because it's super extra powerful. So you should know how that goes and what to avoid. Now. The first thing I want to tell you, and this is really important, before you start to record a macro, go through the complete work process, every step, plan it out, think what you have to do and keep it simple because the macro recording process cannot record everything. It actually can record very little in Affinity Photo. So you have to really, really think about what you're doing first. Now, after you've done that, and for example, what I did is I go, I went through the whole process, then I opened up every single adjustment and took screenshots of the settings so I can simply write them afterwards when I create the macro. Okay, now that we have cleared that, 
Here are some advices on how to do that. You have to go to view and then to studio and down here it says macro. Click on that and this window pops up. If there is something in there like right now, you can click here to reset that and now it's empty so you start with a fresh macro. That's important. If there are any steps in there, you cannot delete them afterwards. You can turn them off but you can't delete them. So be pretty sure that this window is empty when you start recording. I think it is more useful to you if I talk about the limitations of what this can do because this tells you actually more about the macros than telling you what it can do. How to record is you click here on start recording and here's the first limitation. You go in here and say hey I want to make a cool like overlay effect with an ellipse. So you select the ellipse tool and you drag the ellipse and this is fine. Add an ellipse no problem. But a white ellipse, well, maybe not so useful. So what you want to do is you go to fill color and you click on a color and you can't do that. You cannot change the color of the ellipse like that because it cannot be recorded. Now you could go over here to color and then try to set it over here and again cannot record set fill color. So this also doesn't work. So to my knowledge, there isn't really a way to record or like change the color of an ellipse while you're recording. So this is basically out of the picture to work with that, which is really sad because this would have amazing potential. So what I did was mainly and like exclusively work with the adjustment layers and with the live filters. Now, here are some things you also need to know. And by the way, just to point this out, you can do amazing, amazing, amazing things with just the adjustment layers and the live filter. So this is like still mwah, amazing, tasty, really cool stuff. All right. So let's have a look at that. You create an adjustment. Let's say we create levels here and oh, I forgot to click on record. So let's clean this here again. Like think about these steps, clean it first, then click on record. And then, okay, I need to stop again because I need to clean also my layers tab. If there is other stuff in there, also not going to work. Okay, again, let's click on record and then let's create now our levels adjustment. I want to move in those and maybe this here. And then I want to put the gamma a little bit over here. So this already looks pretty nice. So this is our first step. Now I want to create a second layer. Let's say we want to have a little bit of white balance here. Maybe make the picture a little bit warmer like that. So that's pretty easy. It's pretty cool. Good. Here's another thing you cannot do. You think you click and drag the layer somewhere else. Can't record move. Doesn't work. Not possible. What you have to do instead is you can select the layer. And by the way, if you select another layer, it's not just selecting another layer. You click on that. It's opening up this menu and gives you logic possibilities. So this is important to understand. It says here the choices are select layer one below current, select layer two from the top, select layer two from the bottom, which all of those describe this position but only relative to what is going on in the layers tab. This is why I told you before the layers tab needs to be clean before you get started, because now imagine you have in there other layers from another process you did before. So there is like 10 layers already in there. If now it says second layer from the bottom, suddenly this layer is not anymore the second layer from the bottom. Maybe it's not even the layer below current, depending on what your project is right now. So mm, it's a bit complicated. So I would always suggest to only have a pixel layer and then build on top of that, not have any other complicated stuff in there. OK, so we can select that. And then sometimes this window comes where you cannot select anything. So click on cancel and then simply like to create a group control G on your keyboard. So that works luckily. Now the next thing you have to do again and you have to do this for every single layer is that you have to click here again select from this menu again click here and cancel if this comes up and the way you move this inside of a group is to go to arrange and say move inside here like this. Now it's in the group. 
And the good thing is, by the way, if you now have something selected in the group and you make another adjustment layer, let's say we want to have a recolor layer for this. I will set that, let's say, to um, soft light. Where's soft light? There we go. Soft light. Let's reduce the opacity quite a bit. So we have a nice like this look here. OK, good. So now this is in here. That works. That is nice. That is fun. And you can work like that. But you have to think about what you're doing. Here is another limitation. And this, again, is kind of mind blowing. If you close the adjustment window that you have just seen, there is no way to open that up again to my knowledge. So I cannot just click double here because this asked me to if I want to select that. So I cannot get back into there. So if you have forgotten to adjust something, that's it. Done. Done so. Not happening anymore. OK, um, here is another thing that's important. If you use live layers, live layers are for some reason always a child of the layer you have actively selected right now, which means every time you create a live layer, for example, let's say I want to have, um, let's say, unsharpen mask. OK, you can see that this is now a child of this other layer. And so none of the settings take effect in your picture because they are applied to your adjustment layer. So that doesn't work. So you have to move it out of there. The way you do that is you go again to arrange and then you go to move outside. If this layer is still selected, so you can click on this little arrow here and you can see, OK, this is still selected. That's good for us. So we can then arrange and move this outside. So this is now an individual layer. And actually, as you can see, if I sharpen my picture, this is applied to the picture. You can see how it's getting sharper and, and not sharp. OK, so this is how that works. That is pretty important also to know. So you can do a lot with the adjustments. You can do a lot with the uh, live filters, but it is a pain. Sometimes you just want to like, I don't know, go outside and scream in the park and then come back and have a cup of camel tea. <laughs> I cannot other I can't describe it in another way because it was like it was so painful to make these macros. I'm so happy they turned out well and I'm really so proud to create this pack for you but like the process is not fun I can tell you right now but it's good that you know how it works because you can do still amazing stuff with that. Uh, what else is there to tell you? Okay, if you want to change uh, the order of your layers um Again, you can't drag and move them around. That's not possible. What you have to do instead is to go here to arrange and then to move back one or move forward one, which means move the layer down, move the layer up. Um, and of course, move to the back means it's completely down. So it's the lowest layer and move to the front means it's the upmost layer. In this case, we can't move to front because it's the highest layer inside of the group, not of the total layers. OK, so yeah, you can do a lot of cool stuff with that. The last thing I want to tell you about this is if you do anything at all that needs to be resized or centered or anything like that, this might not afterwards line up if you have a picture of a different size in your library. If you go here and down there, it says scale and it says stretch, max fit, minimum fit. And you also can align it center, top left, all these choices here. Um, this might not give you the exact same look as you have created in your macro if it works at all. So this is kind of you have to experiment with that and see, does it work? Does it not work? How good is it? Um, so this is why I avoided in my macro pack anything that can that needs resizing or centering at all. I don't have anything like that in my macro pack. So don't worry. They should work like fluently and easy and awesome. OK. All right. <laughs> so now you know about how to create macros. Have a lot of fun experimenting. And yeah, good luck with the process. It's fun. It's really useful, but it's also a pain, to be honest, um, at the moment. Well, thank you very much for watching the tutorial and see you in my next video. Bye. Have a nice day. See you soon.